Welcome, Household of Faith, to our time of worship together on this 11th Sunday of Pentecost. As always, we ask that God will make sacred the places from which we gather, to make those places our sanctuary for this day, and to bless us as we continue to be faithful servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just a couple of announcements. Our ad hoc reopening committee looking at the possibilities of the time in which we will be able to return to worship, as well as our ad hoc committee looking at the future of Jefferson, continue to need our prayers, continue to need our best thoughts as they do their work together. In September, we will be beginning again our women's Bible study. I am also interested in starting another adult study and would like to know who is interested in participating in that. If you are interested in doing an adult study or in joining the women's study, please email me at rev.kathy.clark at gmail.com and I will make sure to be in touch with you. As well, if you have any prayer concerns that you would like to share with me, please make sure that you email those as well and let me know if those are concerns that you would like to share with the whole community and I will do that. Hear now these words as we call ourselves together in worship. Holy God, Lord of us all, we gather to worship you and to reaffirm our sacred relationship as children of God. With parental care, God welcomes us to our shared experiences of worship, fellowship, prayer, and praise. Renewing God, we gather to be reinvigorated in our worship and in the witness and relationships that flow from worship. Together and individually, we pray that we will be cleansed and refreshed by the holy winds of God's Spirit as it blows around and within us. The Lord our God gives new life and new blessings as we come together in the unity of one purpose, to praise and glorify God. Blessings, honor, glory, and power belong to you, O God, creator of all humanity, who claims all of us as beloved children. Amen. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford.
Among the lectionary readings lifted up for today are two psalms, portions of two psalms, Psalm 133 and Psalm 67. I will be lifting the words of these psalms up in my prayer as we pray together today. Please join me. O oh Lord our God, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Lord our God, indeed how good and pleasant it is when your kindred live together in unity. As we lift our voices to you in prayer this day, Lord, we ask you to teach us the way to that union. As we sing praises to your name and offer thanksgiving for all that you have given us, help us to be mindful that it is the unity that you offer to us as our Lord and Creator that binds us together. As we come before you in petition and intercession, bearing our hearts before you, help us to remember that our union is found in you, in creation, and in your plan, all in accordance to your will. Lord, if you lead us, we will find the way. If we but choose to follow, we will know your ways. We will become accustomed to seeking all of the good that we can find in one another. We'll become, we will become so used to finding you in each other's voice, in each other's eyes and ears and hands. We will know that you are in our midst without failing if we but seek that which unites us in your name. As we speak about the proceeds of the heart in today's service, Lord, we ask that you open our hearts before you and read them like a book as only you can do. And as you read what is in our hearts, Lord, help us to cleanse from them the things that hold us apart from you and from one another. We ask as you read them to help us find the kernels of truth and blessing and grace that you have placed within each of our hearts. Lord, as we come before you this day, help us to seek all that is best in this life. Help us to be compelled by living out of a heart that speaks of our innermost being, an innermost being that finds its purpose, its joy, its sense of love in you. We pray for our world today, O oh Lord. You know the many blemishes upon it. You know the many ways in which your creation has been marred, ways and things that only you can heal. But we also know that you will use us in the healing. You will use us to heal our planet. You will use us to heal one another. You will use us to heal humanity. Help us to know how you would use us, Lord. Help us to seek what you are calling each one of us individually and what you are calling us corporately as a household of faith to be. Sometimes our ears get so clogged and sometimes our vision is cloudy. Help us to see clearly and help us to hear well. Lord, if we but call upon your name, things will be clear to us. If we but call upon your love, ways in which we can bring greater purpose and meaning to all that we are will be clear to us. Lord, we seek your presence in all that we are and in all that we do. And Lord, our God, may you be gracious to us and bless us and may your face shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. 
Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. And now we pray in the name of the one who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory and the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our scripture lesson for this week's sharing of the word comes from Matthew 15, beginning with the 10th verse. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then Jesus said, Are you still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. Please join me in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts as we lift them up together to you this day be acceptable in your sight, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Our passage from Matthew today rests right near the middle of his gospel, in the very depths of the years of Jesus' teaching and preaching. In the preceding verses to this passage, the Pharisees were questioning Jesus because his disciples were not following dietary laws. I don't want to focus on a debate of the dietary laws as uplifted in these earlier verses. To fully honor such a discussion would take a much longer time than we have, a time of learning about history and tradition. Having many Jewish friends who honor these laws has taught me an appreciation of their place in lives of faith. Indeed, I think Jesus' greater interest was in exposing a blind adherence to the words of a law as opposed to living a life characterized by faith and heart, which can incorporate those laws. I want to focus on Jesus' teaching, rather. What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And the tool of the mouth is the tongue. Ibn al-Qayyim, born in 13th century Damascus, said a person's tongue can give you a taste of his heart. And as we have all learned, that taste can be sweet, bitter, wholesome, rancid, rich, bland, uplifting, destructive. As children, how many of us came home from school crying because of an unkind remark from another child and had our parents Teach us that phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. And how long did it take us to learn that words do indeed hurt and break, and that we could be deeply hurt by them or cruelly hurt others with them? Here are some other quotes about the power of the tongue. This one, anonymous. The tongue has no bones, but is strong enough to break a heart. So be careful with your words. Frank Sonnenberg said, It's better to bite your tongue than to eat your words. Yasir Qadi, The tongue is but a small, soft flesh, yet it is capable of breaking the strongest bonds and destroying the most powerful of relationships. And another anonymous quote, talk with your mind before you talk with your tongue. Perhaps Jesus would say, think with your heart before you talk with your tongue. Last Advent, I had the wonderful opportunity to teach a class at Christ United Methodist Church in Bethel Park on preparing our hearts for Advent. When I read this week's reading in the lectionary, I took out my notes from that class, thinking of what I had learned about the Hebrew word for heart, lev. In our Old Testament scriptures, the word lev refers to the whole of the innermost part of the human, yet it is translated heart. It is the seat of conscience and moral character, the center of physical, mental, and spiritual life. 
Therefore, when Jesus tells us that what proceeds from the mouth comes from the heart, he isn't simply saying we speak out of our feelings. He is saying that our words reveal our character. They reveal what is most central about who we are. We live in a culture in which words are cheap. They are hurled through the ether like beads at Mardi Gras with little regard to whom they hurt or for their power to break and maim. People of high profile and low profile leaders and followers, people of every economic station in life, people who consider themselves religious and those who don't, young people, old people and all ages in between are becoming increasingly careless with the words we use. Name-calling is a sin that breaks people, and yet our public discourse is full of people calling others belittling names. A long time ago, I came to understand sin is anything that diminishes another person, anything that makes another feel less in any way than the person God made them to be. Murder is obviously a sin, yet so is character assassination. One diminishes ultimately through a physical death. The other can diminish through a lifetime of hurt and recrimination. When my children were young, one of my daughters came home telling me that she had heard something very bad about another girl at school. It was the kind of tale that could mar that young girl for life. I asked my daughter if she had heard the story from the girl herself or someone else involved in the story. No, she heard it from a friend who heard it from her cousin. I asked her if she had any proof that the story was true. She said no, which led us to a very serious conversation about the power what we choose to repeat can have in another person's life. Sometimes we wonder if our words are heard when we try to teach our children ways in which to navigate the, ra the rocky road of this life. A couple weeks later, my daughter told me that another young person was telling her a rumor, and she asked the girl the same questions I asked her, and she chose not to repeat the rumor. Character is taught. We all have a story of how someone else's words have hurt us, and truth be told, we all probably have a story of how something we said has hurt someone else. My brother-in-law, John, told me a story about his mother and his aunt. His aunt had a packet of family photos that went missing. She accused John's mother, her sister, of stealing the photographs. It wasn't until John's mother had died that her sister, in going through an old coat one day, found the packet of photographs. They had not spoken since she accused her of being a thief. And now the truth came out, too late to save that relationship. A relationship marred for a packet of photographs, a woman named Thief, who had not stolen. When we choose to diminish another person through our words, we would do well to remember what Jesus was teaching. It is not what we put in our mouths that defiles us, it is what comes out of them. What comes out of our mouths reveals the very center of our being, our heart. As that anonymous quote reminds us, the tongue has no bones but is strong enough to break a heart. So be careful with your words. While we live in a current state of culture in which words are bandied around so carelessly, we do not need to be led around by the nose by our culture, or better yet by the tongue. As we profess our faith, we choose to be led by Christ. We have choices to make. We can think before we click a button that shares a joke that is really not funny. Research before we post or repeat a story that may support our viewpoint but may not be true. Take charge of our tongues, be it the one in our mouths or our virtual tongues on the internet. Maybe the best part of our six-foot social distancing is that it makes it harder for us to whisper gossip to each other. 
Remember at all times, Jesus teaching, it is not what goes into our mouth that defiles us. What defiles us is what comes out of our mouths and that what comes out of our mouths proceeds from the heart. The good news in Christ is that what comes out of our mouth can also bring us closer to God. If to sin is to diminish a brother or sister, then to follow God's path is to raise up a brother or sister. I searched on the internet for words that are the opposite of defile. Just a few of them are tend, consider, praise, regard, benefit, protect, respect, sustain, shield, uphold. Therefore, if what defiles us is what comes out of our mouth, then it is also possible that what upholds, shields, and sustains us and others comes out of our mouth, especially given that what proceeds from the mouth comes out of the heart. If we recognize our hearts as the whole of the innermost part of our humanity, as the seat of our conscience and moral character, and the center of our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, and if we call upon the Holy Spirit which indwells in each of us in the very center of our hearts, we must see that we are capable through our words of healing and uplifting, building and repairing, loving and relating in a way worthy of our Creator. I believe we are on this earth to bring out the best in each other. I will preach that until the day I die. I believe that the best in each other is the mark of God upon us, God-given, God-nourished. When we seek the best in our brothers and sisters, we offer the best of ourselves. But we must be deliberate in so doing, not twisted in the wind of today's slam fest, but soaring in the love of our Lord and Savior. As a household of faith, we are called to help one another hold on to the moral center of Christ's teachings. This we can do. In his sermon, The Law Established Through Faith, John Wesley wrote, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Neither is love content with barely working no evil to our neighbor. It continually incites us to do good, as we have time and opportunity to do good in every possible kind and in every possible degree to all. Wesley might have gone on to say, speak good words proceeding from the heart. Can we commit to help one another think before we speak our own words? Deliberate before we share another? Seek the best in each other? And I don't just mean those whose names we know, but also, also those we do not. God's creation knows no boundaries. Borders are drawn by humans, not God. We will falter. Thank God for the gift of forgiveness. We will praise. Thank God for the gift of thanksgiving. We will lose our way. Thank God for the gift of prayer. We will need grace. Thank God for the gift of mercy. We will trip and need to be picked up and dusted off at the knees. Thank God for the gift of unconditional love. And in light of the scripture from Matthew, let us daily pray that the words of our mouths, the proceeds of our hearts, be acceptable in the sight of our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer.
This is the time in our worship together when we stop to give thanks for the gift of giving. The time in which we remember how blessed it is that God gives us the opportunity to give back to God's work but a portion of all that our Lord has given to us. As we share in this time to get us together, let us ponder in our minds and in our hearts the ways in which we can offer all of what we are up to the Lord's service and pray that what we offer may be found worthy. Our hearts are overflowing with your love, O God, like precious oil that cascades down on the beards of old, like the rains that shower down upon your creation. Guide us now as we share with others the abundance of our joy. We pray that you will give us the vision to use our blessings to offer hope to others. In Christ's name we pray and act. Amen. I'll bring you my first fruits. I'll bring you the very best I have. Cause nothing else can come before my Lord. I'm giving my first fruits I'm giving the very best I have Cause everything I have is truly yours I'll bring you my first fruits I'll bring you the very best I have Giving the very best I have Cause everything I have is truly yours You have been faithful You have been kind I have been blessed with all I need treasures you've given me. I'll bring you my first fruit. I'll bring you the very best I have. There's nothing else can come before my Everything I have is truly 
have come through I have had everything I need because of you So let me not forget to bring you back the best of the time, the talent and treasures you've given Giving the very best I have Cause everything I have is truly yours Cause everything I have is truly yours Yes, it's yours As we come to the close of our worship together for this week, let me share these words of blessing. Go into the world with assurance, hope, and promise that the grace of the word of life rest upon you, the love of the source of life embrace you, and the transforming power of the breath of life help, strengthen, and surprise you this day and all your days. Amen.